Yo, it's me. It's me. It's Sai Zanzi. I love this guy. Sai Zanzi is making a name for himself. He's really killing it out there. We're definitely going to show you a crazy video, something that happened on the internet that Tony Hinchcliffe is trying to cover up and make go away. Now, this was all revealed to me. This was all revealed to me this morning right before the show. Uh, last week, there was a Bring Back group post uh, a few days ago that was overlooked. And I overlooked it as well, kind of. It was somebody posting about something happening on Kill Tony, and they gave a link that was queued up to the time code, and I watched it. I didn't get what he was talking about. I said, I'll, I'll watch it later. And we did. We ended up watching it later. It was Dane Cook on Kill Tony, the show where Tony Hinchcliffe, celebrity guest, and Brian Redband sit on stage at the Comedy Store, and they have open mic comedians. Can you bring some Kleenex? Open mic comedians come up and do one minute of stand-up, and then they're judged by the uh, the panel, okay? And the band. We've seen Kill Tony on this show before. And uh, they had Dan Cook on, who in itself... There's a story there. This is something I would have played on Red Bar. They had Dane Cook on, and he was a disaster. Every word out of his mouth. First of all, he barely spoke. Tony did not engage with him at all. You'll see some of this. And every line out of his mouth was a bomb. A big, disastrous bomb. The audience didn't care. In fact, most of the audience sitting there was like comedy snobs. This day and age, if you're into stand-up comedy, you've got this idea that Dane Cook sucks, right? So he comes back. Now, remember, Dane Cook used to be... Sorry about this, folks. Please turn away. Ew. We're over. We're done with that. Uh, <laughs> Dane Cook used to be a co-owner of the Laugh Factory. This is on Sunset Boulevard. It's about... Uh, I don't even know. It's a full mile down the road. It's on the same side of the street as the Comedy Store. The Comedy Store and the Laugh Factory have always... Had like a beef going on. Mitzi Shore owned the comedy store and the owner of the Laugh Factory is this crazy, wacky Middle Eastern man. His name slips my mind right now. But there was a period, I thought it was still going on, where Dane Cook was part owner of that building. And there was this big feud back in the day where if you worked the comedy store, you didn't work the Laugh Factory and vice versa. And then that started breaking up a little bit and people became okay with working both places. But if you were like a comedy store regular, you didn't work the Laugh Factory and vice versa. And Dane Cook was a Laugh Factory guy. I mean, on the top of the Laugh Factory was this like fake little water tower thing. And they had like Dane Cook's logo on it 24-7 on top of the Laugh Factory. So... It's weird to me that Dane Cook is back at the comedy store. And what's even weirder is you'll see in this clip, not only does he look like a weird cat woman, mutated man after all the plastic surgery, he's wearing this big Louis J. Gomez style black hat too, that I don't know if it ever has looked good on anyone. I don't know why people continue to try to wear these big black fitted high hats. It just makes you look white trash or that you possibly hang around an auto zone. And, uh, but Dan Cook is wearing a comedy store shirt in it too. And I think he thought there would be this warm reception. Like Dan Cook's finally back at the comedy store. I think he thought that would be part of this story of going on Kill Tony, but it wasn't. In fact, the audience barely gave him a, a smattering of applause when he came on. Most of them thinking in their heads, this guy, I thought he sucks. Tony had to actually, at the beginning of the show, uh, like, give a story about how legendary Dane Cook used to be in order to pump people up for it. And then Tony ignored Dane Cook the entire show. You could make like a, uh, over the course of the two hours, you could make a, a highlight clip of every time Dane Cook speaks and it would maybe be two minutes long. And again, they were all brutal bombs. Now, the part we just figured out this morning and maybe what the Red Bar listener was uh, referencing last week, we couldn't find his post. There was an edit in the YouTube video. Something was cut out. Something big was cut out during the middle of this Tony Hinchcliffe Kill Tony episode. 
I didn't know Tony cut stuff out, so I was really curious to find out what it was. And I found out! And I need tape of it. Just kidding, I have the tape! I have the cut out part, and it's fucking damning! It's really bad. It's so bad that I turned it off halfway. Yes. And I said, holy fuck, you're not going to believe what was cut out. I haven't seen it And yet. I'm saving it for the show. The whole scandal is going to unfold right before your eyes today. Tony cut something out. He is trying to hide the truth. And it's shocking. And it's all coming up right now. I'm the only show that delivers you these scoops. And before I do this, I need you to remember that. Think about joining this Scars Club now that I got you all hot. <laughs> Redbarradio.net slash Scars Club. We're ad-free. I insult everybody constantly. I go to war with people. This is unheard of. Nobody is doing this. Nobody is going after these people in the way I am. Uh, we need your support. Redbarradio.net slash Scars Club. It gives you access to our archives, thousands of episodes dating back to 2003. And it gives you access to the Scars Club bonus episodes, the actual episodes that pop up through the week, okay? Redbarradio.net slash scars. There were so many new members that signed up this week, and I want to welcome them. I feel like I need to welcome them. We welcome you, and thank you for making this possible. That's it. Let's watch the tape of all tapes. Where will I find this on the list? Um... Here today, Jules. Where will um, I find this? Because my Dane eyes Cook on are Kill Tony. It's near shot. The top. Dane Cook on Kill Tony. All right. Let's see what happens here. I'll just wait. Where? Oh, here's the cutout part. Great. Okay. Here we go. Thrown together just, <laughs> just moments before our show started. We put all this together for you. I'll let the intro do its thing. Death Squad presents. Here they come. We always do an intro just so you get the, the vibe. Now remember, this is streamed live. Mm, Tony calls it the biggest live streamed podcast out there live stream comedy podcast out there. So they do this live at the comedy store. That's why you can't edit anything out because it's already been viewed by thousands of people. Actually, Tony kills himself here. He lies in this episode. He goes, right now there are 4,000 people viewing this at home. So 4,000 people get to see the part that you edited out, stupid. That's why you can't edit things from a live show. You're going to be caught. <laughs> Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the real famous comedy store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get up for t uh, This is a great point. Somebody says, is it bad that I usually enjoy Kill Tony? Not at all. In fact, it's a wonderful show. It's the reason I've been watching it for months. Because what's happening here is a fool's watch on so many angle, uh, so many levels here. Not only do you have the open mic comedians where almost every one of them is a fool. You have people criticizing them and making fun of them. So that's right up our alley. But then you also get to fools watch the comedian that's on. You get to fools watch Brian Redband, which happens every time. You get to hate watch Tony Hinchcliffe. And you get to fools watch the band and the audience. So yes, it's a good show. Even Tony has his moments here. Just because somebody is totally vile, evil, disgusting, mistaken for an art woman from the 90s. <laughs> Doesn't mean they're entirely unwatchable. Shows that are unwatchable? Anthony Kumar's The Anthony Kumia Show. Shows that are watchable? Bill Schultz's Morning. Uh, Patrick Melton's Nobody Likes Onions. For me. Uh, but uh, yeah, of course. It's not that we're supposed to be. We're not these guys that are just, we are repulsed by our enemies and can't watch one. That's what they say about us. That's not what we say about them. We love watching. It is enjoyable. So never I wish feel the show bad. Shows on network television. Exactly. I wish the whole world could see this. That's how I. When I see something like this, I go. I need everyone I know to know, and I need all their friends to know, and I need America to know that this went down. That's how I feel. So you should feel that way. Never 
not watch something at a protest because it's hosted by one of our fools. That's a fool's mistake in itself. Tony Hinchcliffe. Here he comes, the evil 90s. Fuck yeah, everybody. We're here on a Monday. Make some noise. Art woman. Brian Redban is here. Hey. The great Ryan J. Ebelt is here. He's, He's already Tilda started. Tilda Swinton, someone said. Okay, give me a picture of that. Can you see how Dane Cook thought, like, Dane Cook's so out of it. Our fantasy is that he really thought that this was like a really chic New York gallery owner from <laughs> 90s swanky Soho, New York. You know? Uh, let's see this picture. That's such a funny take to think that that's who Dane... Yeah, the chick was really cool. But, like, no. Here, let's see. Yeah, like a chick like this, kind of. I guess. I mean, I have somebody else in mind, but no, yeah, I there's guess. someone else that I'm thinking of that I can't. Yeah, like a kind of chick like this, but you would see her like in the 90s, especially like you'd see this person, yeah, play the role. Or they of, might like, be in like an early 2000s rom Just type in <laughs> art gallery owner. Woman. Woman. Let's see what comes up. See, these are all modern day art gallery people. She definitely has glasses and a turtleneck. Yeah, That's and key. again, it's like the year 1997. Spiky hair for a woman is in, yeah. in this year. <laughs> it, like slicked down black hair, huge earrings. You're not going to find her in today's modern world. But she's there. I remember that, that adds to Dane Cook being so out of touch that he thinks that's what a, a sh sexy, strong woman looks like. <laughs> so we came up with this concept that he's like, oh, she's like a power horse, man. A lot of people are intimidated by her, but I think she's really awesome. Powerful. Sexy. But it's actually just Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> yeah, David Bowie. I mean, when I'll I see her, I know I'm I've seen of. her in a movie and she's like almost like a Jew woman. Yes. She's almost like, honey, follow me. I've got just what you're looking for. And then takes but you But she's like, more severe. Yeah. She's mean. also like a crippling bitch. I'll find her before the next We need show. to find her. Okay, let's watch. The drawing tonight's episode, the new Kill Tony posters at RyanJEbelt.com. You guys excited for a great fucking night tonight or what? You're here at the number one live podcast in the world, Kill Tony. Hello not Parker to the Posey, thousands and thousands. Not Tracy Ullman. This is a bit character. You're not going to find her. I don't want to see any mainstream actresses. They didn't play this role. Think Janine from Ghostbusters 1 a little bit. Ah, I don't need, Maybe there was someone in Ghostbusters 1 when they go to the art gallery, maybe. You would need to look through all 80s and 90s. Janine from Ghostbusters 1 is the closest. Really? Send me to that. what send me I that. was thinking yeah. so far. Let's see this. Frida... No, not Frida. You guys are off here with these. That's why we need to... I feel compelled now to show you exactly. Janine is very it's close, close, but not quite. But not, this is too nerdy, and I'm trying to find a good picture. She's definitely rich. She's very rich. She's posh. She's sassy. This isn't it. I don't know why it reminded me. I guess the same... You want to go more to this direction. Now, the hair would be slicked down. This woman would be very tall and lanky. This woman would be rich. She would have small tits. She would have a giant glass of wine. She would have, again, big, goofy earrings. She would be devious. We must find this woman. Fred Armisen? Let's see. Very close. Here's Fred Armisen as a woman like this. Yes. Much more close. Yeah. Uh, right here. Now imagine but this with a like very Tony. short hair. Like, imagine Tony Hinchcliffe's hair on this. There was a time when a haircut like Tony's was kind of stylish on an art yes, gallery Yes, exactly. Woman. We haven't seen a woman like this. The next time I see a woman like this, I'm going to throw her in my trunk <laughs> and bring her here. I'm going to go, uh, I just know trust me. that there's a character on TV somewhere yeah. that looks exactly like yes. this. You know, you walk into the gallery and she's there and she takes you back, you know, to show you something. Pacino's wife in heat maybe I don't know that's about you want to look around there it's really important let's see this <laughs> someone in the chat let's see we got other stuff nope that's not it whatever that last link was I don't even want to confuse people man that hurts me when I'm trying to describe it this is why this is good people are not seeing what I'm seeing yet and remember it looks like Tony Hinchcliffe so if your girl's got hair any longer than Tony's you're you got the wrong example that's how you know Okay. Imagine the same haircut as Tony, jet black, and gelled to the head. Okay. 
We will find it. All right, let's see him introduce Dan Cook. Let's get to this. Thousands watching live on YouTube right now, and we're coming at you. I'm doing stand-up comedy in Calgary this weekend with Jeremiah Watkins featuring. Calgary. And then, of course, we're going to Europe. We have sold-out shows in Dublin, Manchester, and London, but I do believe we just released a few of the comp tickets for London. So for those of you that thought it was sold out, go jump on right now. Yeah, Annie Lennox and, uh, is kind of a good one. Send that over if you've got it, Annie Lennox. Although that's not, I'm telling you, there are, there's like 20 women who have actually played the role that I'm describing. The Annie Lennox haircut is what I was thinking okay. of, kind of. Let's see that. Oh, but it's not exactly right. It's just a part of the puzzle. But yeah, because we got to show people because then they can narrow it down. Nobody with long hair, I repeat, no one. Yes, Annie Lennox's haircut is more what we're talking about. Slicked to the head. Okay, a thin, narrow, Hinchcliffe-like head, you know? But imagine black hair slicked down, maybe a swooping, short, cropped bang that's slicked to the head that veers off to the right. The earrings are even bigger than the woman's whole head. Yeah. Okay? All right, we'll keep going here. Uh, if we ever get to it. Finish it off. Then I do six nights at the Soho Theater. Still some tickets available for that on the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday shows. Uh, and, uh, that okay. week, the February. For that, there's no show. I and then the part where Dane comes yeah, out. Yeah, down here. in Mexico. Oh, great. It's not until oh. like five minutes in. Oh, wow. Dane enters at 5.30. Incredible. Okay, so let's go there. And let's listen. Do they love him? Are they going to give him the applause he deserves after? And again, another thing that I think Dane thought this was, because he's wearing the Comedy Store shirt. You heard the history there. I think Dane thought this was his big welcome home party to the Comedy Store. And no one even remembered that they don't get a, no one knows any of this anymore. And nobody cares. And I think this is really affecting Dane today on a very emotional level. When I saw this guy uh, for the first time, I had just dropped out of college. I went back up in a depressed state to Youngstown, Ohio. I was hanging out with a bunch of my old friends mm. from, uh, from high school and some new friends from college, and we were all getting stoned. And these guys were cracking up in the living room, watching Vicious Circle, and I literally had an epiphany, a moment, sitting in the back of that living room, realizing this guy is in a theater in the round. He's in full control of an entire arena surrounding him, killing I want to do this. And the that audience is, is like, we don't care. He sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're so not into Dane Cook. And this speech doesn't even make them realize, oh, yeah, he is one of the greats. Let's show him some love. They're all talking. They don't give a fuck. It was right then and there when I decided that I was going to be wow. a stand-up comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dane Cook. Wow. That is weak. Hell yeah. There he is. Here he is. It's the real fucking deal. His hair terribly burned off his head in some freak surgical accident. Where Dane a... Cook is joining us for the first time ever. This is crazy. I'm very fucking excited to be here. You guys ready? <laughs> I want to say thank you, and I want to let you guys know I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm in the best shape of my entire week. <laughs> okay. I'm his super... first bomb there, okay? I'm going to call that a bomb. These get much worse. So he's bringing your 1998, early 2000s Dane Cook energy to a room that finds him vile, okay, and a laughing stock because that's kind of, you know, what his career turned into, a laughing stock for various reasons. You know, just uh, the, the way he talks has been mocked to death so many times that you really can't even talk like that anymore without looking like a fool. It's so, like doing a Borat voice yes, exactly. at this point. <laughs> so Dane comes on. He's got his signature Dane Cook voice. He is going to try one-liner jokes after each comic. They all fall flat. He has this fake excitement for the show, which slowly turns into panic. Please pay attention to his body language. He'll tell a joke. It'll fall flat. And then he'll quickly do something. He'll take a full sip or he'll readjust as if that's going to fix things. Uh-uh. This is really, again, without that weird part being cut out that we're going to get to, this in itself is a beautiful tape that we would have played anyway. I'm pumped about this. This is exciting that, uh, that people get pulled out of a bucket and can uh, talk to you and get some feedback from you. 
because uh, in in a weird, crazy way, this whole thing exists because of uh, because of you. I was no. so what? insanely amazed and jealous that you were making all my friends laugh while they were staring at a TV. Are you saying you're going to write me a check tonight? Is that what's going to uh, happen? Hello, That's Infinite CBD <laughs> coming right at you. Uh, as many you tubes, can br- use the loop. <laughs> as many tubes as you want. They give you gummies. They calm you down. Anything you want from Infinite CBD. Okay, let's Red jump. Red Band is on fire compared to yeah. Me, Red basically. Band. <laughs> Red Band kills over Dane today. And you'll see some of those. He gets let's, bigger laughs. Let's go to eight minutes. The band is going to come out. Remember, every week the band dresses up as different guys and they do characters. So the band's going to come out and Dane decides to riff with the band. It's rather embarrassing here at eight minutes. Let's see this. Oh! Here comes the band and their Rastafarians today. Wow, all right. It appears as though they are uh, reggae. Whoa, that's pretty good. (laughs) Okay, they're hacky sacking. They come out hacky sacking, wearing dreads. They're Rastas, right? Dane catches the hacky sack and decides he's going to hack with them. It's very pathetic. Watch this. Uh, uh Look at Dane. Dane, no. (laughs) Sit. They're playing hacky sack right now. Jeremiah is shocked. Dane is overcompensating. Remember, this is his first time back in the public eye in this sort of thing. Comedy has kind of passed him. All these guys are young and they're hot shots. And Dane is really trying to fit in here today by showing that he loves this show. Even though these are moments that kind of are supposed to be, you know, laughed at, not played with. Watch this. He's playing this. <laughs> they are playing hacky sack right now. Jeremiah is shockingly good at this. Dane, wow. stop. So you guys are, uh, I'm guessing you guys are. Uh, and now Dane, see how Dane sits down unconfidently with his head down? Because that was embarrassing. He didn't pull it off and there was no reason to, to do that with them. He's not a good hacky sack player. He doesn't know how to do it. He missed the ball multiple times or the sack. So it was a foolish move. Uh, Rope on a snake. <laughs> hey, Tony. Dane's fake laughing to pretend. Oh, he gets it. He gets what's hip. He has no idea. He'd laugh at anything. He does made. a huge fake smile yeah. the entire show. Big fake smile. Okay, let's jump to 2445. I'm going to skip that because to get into this drummer today. Yes, yeah, skip too much, the Joel too much. thing. We'll save it for uh, another day. Let's go to 28 or is that? 26. 26. Minor Dane bomb. Are you the leader of a cult? Okay, this is good. And remember, all of these bombs are very minor, okay? But if you watch the full show. But if you watch the whole thing, and we really want to show you these, let's uh, go to 26. And there's definitely more than what I put in because I was rushing. Yeah. Okay, and remember, if I had those markers here, imagine how nice this would be. All right, there's a guy up here. He looks schlubby, and this is one of Dane's only times that he talks. So watch this. Something to your tiny, tiny penis. Yeah. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. He stunted its growth. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's something sort of interesting. Maybe you oh, could talk about I that. I almost like you, man. I really you do. I like really me. like you I almost. I see the look in your eyes. You like me. <laughs> Are you the leader of a cult? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. And, and the cop, kind of, the uh, cop went all the way. Right? Puts the mic down, looks around to see if anyone else is laughing. They're not, you know? And then watch, he'll go into pure panic mode. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. Okay, okay, all right. Now, still hiding behind that fake smile, I see. Well, hold on. Not much longer will he hide behind that smile. Let's see. Uh, guy plays the piano and Dane sings. This is really cringe. So it turns out through interviewing this bum that they have on stage right now, this comic, they go, what hobbies do you have? He goes, I play the piano. They send him back to the back of the stage where there's a grand piano hidden behind a curtain. Yes, this is all happening. And then Cook starts riffing lyrics to the guy playing the piano. This is really embarrassing. And again, no one called for this. No one wanted this. And does Dane end it confidently? No, he doesn't. 2845. Let's go there. 2845. Here we go. This entire time. All right, let's hear a little something from the completely insane Ryan Oganic. <laughs> Dane's bobbing his head. Let's just... Wow. Look at that. I guess it's pretty good. I just went up on stage and bombed tonight. That's Dane Cook. 
on the Tony Show, and man, it didn't feel all right. Ah. Here it comes. I shouldn't be up here. I should be in the background of Superstore. <laughs> There you go, Ryan O'Gannon, everybody. I love when it's always funny when your joke song ends in the middle of the verse. <laughs> bah! The Tony Show. He thought that was, like, incredible. The Tony These Show. These all seem like minor bombs now, yeah. but when we were watching this, like, the lead-up to him getting yes. the confidence to pick up the microphone and then saying something and then noticing it doesn't get any laughs Remember, compared to what Tony yeah. and Red Band are getting is hilarious. Remember, he has said nothing on this show. We're showing you, like, almost every part where Dane speaks. So he keeps attempting things. They don't go over that well, and it, little by little, gets worse. I love that song, though. Superstar! <laughs> There you go, Ryan O'Gannick, everybody. That was actually good. I like him. It's good. I like you, he likes you. I, he won Dane Cook over. I like you. Dane, I've never... I like you, man. I do. I've never that seen cool. somebody that plays... Very, very funny guy in a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> I've never... Nope, nope. Not at all. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, this one. Maybe instead of comedy, he could do a dueling piano bar. Is that from Red Band? Yeah. We could skip that. We could skip the Joel bomb, although this drummer, his name is Joel... He's really bad. On a, another show, we'll we'll introduce you to him. Uh, Fifty one oh five minor Dane bomb. He's got creepy doll hair. This one was good. This one was good, and I'll show you what I would have said had I been the comic up here. Let's go to fifty one oh five. I remember a big scandal coming up here. And remember, every single time code is basically every time Tony allows Dane to speak. Yes. Tony does not let another person say anything during these shows for some reason. Yes. So here is this guy up here looking like that kid from Pete and Pete, but it is not the kid from Pete and Pete. Some redheaded kid. And Dane says this to him. This is completely out of context and too far. So Dane watches Tony and Red Band like riff and be insulting to these open micers. So Dane tries out an insult, but it, it falls flat. Look at this. I'm on the stage. <laughs> Every time I come here, you call me Cartman. That's Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. That's Tony. Do it again next week. Okay. My I'm God. I'm sorry. You look like if the problem child got locked into a high school cafeteria. <laughs> just started trying to eat his way out. <laughs> he has creepy doll hair. <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> There's Dan Cook. He has creepy doll hair, okay? Now, if I were that comic, I would go, oh, do I? Maybe I should get surgery for it and uh, fix myself up through maybe some plastic surgery. Would that be good? Dane, do you know anyone? What if the comic would have fired back with that? <laughs> oh, my creepy doll hair. Yeah, maybe I should get it fixed via surgery. Could you imagine Dane's face if that happened? Now, something like that is coming up. Uh, let's go to another minor Dane bomb. This is uh, him saying, you look like an alien to a kid. And this comes up at uh, 5240. Uh, check this out. Tim Tony. Hey. <laughs> hey, Tim Tony. Yeah. Uh, you, you look like the moment right before an alien comes out of the person's belly in the movie <laughs> Alien. Why? Yeah. No, he doesn't at all. Like all of his jokes don't make sense. Yeah, for they're the guy. not. Yeah, they're not creative, descriptive. You, he just wanted to say that, and you would think Powerhouse Dan Cook would be a bit more creative Seriously, than this. Tell me why this kid looks like why? alien is it's about just to come out. A of redheaded him. kid, kind of chubby. You look like uh, an alien's about to come out of your stomach from the movie Alien. Listen to this again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you look. You look like the moment right before an alien comes out of the person's belly in the movie <laughs> Alien. <laughs> Yeah. You do look like... Even the guy goes, yeah. Hmm. Something's growing inside of you. <laughs> I at think a it's the hernia. Yeah, Tony saved him. Okay, uh, let's see. 5345. The cutout. Uh-oh. Let's see how that happens here at 53... Uh, did I read that wrong? 5435. 5435. Okay, let's see this. 5435. I'll do it uh, 10 seconds before. Let's see what gets cut out here. Pumpkin, look. Charlie Brown. Bra, bra. Oh. oh, very good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Daniel. Well, you were up last week. Uh, you did it again tonight. Let's just keep moving. I want to meet someone Thanks, new. Man. Let's get someone new out here. Thanks, I want to meet someone of course. new. Okay. For Vanessa G. Whoa, that was the cut? Yep. Wow, and it even had a slate 
sound effect in there. Like they actually had a noise in the video. Like obviously it was just a noise from the set. But that's weird. They actually slate their own cut, which was completely done by accident, but that's insane. Get someone new out here. Thanks, Daniel. Of course. Whoa. Jihad. Jihad. That is an abrupt cut. So yeah, people noticed that. And we noticed it too. Would you like to see what was cut out? <laughs> this looks terrible for Tony. I can't wait. I so a seen giant that. cut right there. I'll show you that one more time just so you can see. Yeah. Thanks, Daniel. Of course. Whoa, he disappears. <laughs> He's shaking Dane's hand and then poof. We thought maybe he'd cut this because Tony didn't want Dane getting any love. But no. <laughs> Something was cut out, and I saw the beginning of this. The fact that Tony cut this out is really, really bad. Let's watch the cut out part in its entirety right now. Here we go, folks. Now, I have to apologize. Whoever recorded this is screen recording it off their phone, and it flips up and down. It moves around a lot. Kill Tony. I don't want to read that headline. It might blow it. Let's uh, watch what was cut out. But again, the video is going to be all over the place here. Flipping upside down as this guy figures out how to record his screen. Here we go. Oh, pop. Here this we go. This is the cut out part. Here we go. Jesus. It's happening. Here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, he's here. Make some noise for Neil Pop. Neil Pop. Okay, we did not see Neil Pop in the episode. Neil Pop was cut out. Let's see what Neil Pop does that was so damning it needed to be cut out of the show. Maybe, Tony, maybe we could give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this isn't uh, something disgusting, a disgusting, despicable move by Tony. Maybe it was just uh, this guy really sucked or something, or there was a technical issue. Let's find out. And I thought you three prick jobs were supposed to be funny. <gasps> hey, no one's scared of you guys. And this guy's got bare feet on. That's a biohazard. So I'm not even sure about that. Dane, you're dressed like my shitty stepdad. You're wearing the Halloween costume, bud. You know, I heard Dane Cook has a 20-year-old girlfriend. I'm 21. I don't even date 20-year-olds. <laughs> Wow, Tony. so this dude gets up and just talks shit about all of them. Oh now, this is where I stopped watching. I stopped watching right here. I go, okay, I want to see the rest of this on the show. Now, the fact that Tony would cut this out is a real bitch move. You can't be roasted. Dane can't be roasted for dating a 20-year-old at oh the age of God. 50. Come on, that's completely appropriate. They can sit up there and make fun of everyone. Dane said, you have doll hair. You look like aliens going to come out of you and much worse. But they can't be criticized? Oh, no. And Tony is really mean to the comedians, by the way. He's yes. the roast master. Tony is the roast master, remember? He says the meanest shit. The fact that he's cutting out parts where he gets made fun of. This looks bad. Let's see what happens here. Maybe something else happens. Halloween costume, bud. You know, I heard Dane Cook has a 20-year-old girlfriend. I'm 21. I don't even date 20-year-olds. <laughs> Tony, Red Band. Oh. Do you guys have a Joe Rogan ass-wiping schedule? <gasps> Ooh, Red Band is oh. mocking him. Red Band is going, yeah. Look at that. They can't take it. Even the audience is groaning. This Why? Is Why crazy. can't you roast them? This is... I'm surprised it's taken this long for someone to come up with this idea. Roast the roasters. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. And it's not like he's being outlandish. You know, he's actually being surprising. What a comic should be, by the way. A comic should throw curveballs. You know, and this is what this guy's doing. And look at Red Band. He can't take it. Tony is visibly with mad. Neil Pop. Can Dane you Cook. Friends with him. Yeah, Dane Cook is shaking. I want to make this perfectly clear. Dan Cook is furious. Furious. Okay? He is shut down. When he I'm not exaggerating. Him, he didn't even crack a smile. It's hard to see, but he's doing like a stony faced stare yeah. down. Oh, his eyes game. are filled with tears and he's like that. All right, let's watch this whole thing. Tony, Red Band. Do you guys have a Joe Rogan ass wiping schedule? <laughs> 
Hey. Ju just sold himself out. Wow. The poor bass. Everyone in LA's got an attitude, you know. I, I was I was in I was in my neighborhood. Hey, I only got one minute. I, I was in my neighborhood, this homeless lady, right? She was walking through my alley. You know, I felt bad. I said, sweetheart, are you hungry? I had some leftovers from this really good place. And I'm hungry as fuck right now. I could have had it after the show. So I give it to her. She doesn't say anything, which is fine. Her life is difficult, man. <laughs> she Whoa. opens it up. That was Red Band sound effect. He's shooing him off stage. It's weird how the audience is so trained by Tony. They refuse to give it up for this because they're insulting the, the great Lord Tony Hinchcliffe, 90s art woman. That's crazy. <laughs> Look at Dane. Dane has not moved. Dane is fucking furious throwing darts at this guy with his eyes. <laughs> and Red Band is fucking pissed. He's keying in every sound effect that he could possibly find to let this guy know to get the fuck out of here. Let's see what happens. And it's just vegetables, and she goes... Joel Jimenez on drums is gearing up to, uh, to do something. Let the guy talk. He's taking on a hundred people by himself. He's up. Let him speak. Veggies, huh? Let go, I let said, go. yeah, that'll give you energy. She goes, yep. Just oh, wow. wandered off. So Red Band oh. is about to throw him off stage with the bomb sound effect or the bear sound effect that they do. And Tony just leaned over. He goes, let him go. Let him go till he's finished. Because Tony thinks he's going to trap him. It looks like the guy's almost doing his regular stand-up minute now, which is a fool's move. But I don't know yet. Let's find out. When I checked out the listing for my new apartment, there was some folks having an argument in the house right next to me. I swear to you, this is what I hear from the inside. We have no insulation in my neighborhood. I hear, who took my shit? I hear this Get plain ready as for day. Red Band. Again. That's Red Band. Red Band is firing bullets at him with the soundboard and the lighting people are flashing the house lights on and off. They're booing. Wow, I'm done. Fuck. Dane Cook is visibly shook. Holy Dane shit. is looking at Red Band going, fuck. What did he just say? He said, fuck. Like, Dane Cook is not prepared for this. We saw how he acted when I accused him of photoshopping his picture with the now gone Stan Lee. Dane Cook is a delicate, severely mentally challenged person. He's a little demon on a skewer. I want to snap him. <laughs> uh, he is not good at handling stuff like this. Remember when he blew up at me, the specialist. So let's hear Dane. He goes, fuck, to Red Band. God. Wow. I'm done. Fuck. That's Dane. <laughs> Neil, what, so what? let's get it started. <laughs> They're all booing. <laughs> First of all. Wow. All right. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, fucking relax. All right. Wow. First of all, not as easy here as it is in the YouTube comments, is it? Whoa! I strongly disagree. This was very brave. Against all these people, you know, what do you expect? That was easy. I mean, no, it wasn't as easy as the YouTube comments. Yeah, but he still, that doesn't mean his point is uh, null. All right? And I just want to let you know, for those of you listening to the show wondering where the West Hollywood Bear was, is I made sure Brian didn't hit it. You went 40 seconds over, but I wanted to make sure that you felt the silence. <gasps> I knew it. From the joke hey, hey. that you actually tried Tony, to do. Bears like me love fucking little twinks like you. Bears wow! like you. Ah, and this idiot Damn who's it. filming it has got a big uh, advisory. Wow, what does that mean, bears? Oh, because he was going to bring up the West Hollywood bear, which is the sound that tells you you're done. Let's hear that again. So there's going to be more. Remember, this is two minutes into a six-minute clip, so there could be much more happening here when they interview him. He tried Tony, to do. Bears like me love fucking little twinks like you. Bears like you? What, is, what yeah. does that mean? You look mean? like a lesbian, man. What are you <laughs> calling me <laughs> Dude. What? You look like you look like uh oh, uh, uh, put it together. Uh, wow. Are, you look like Ben Stiller with his fur off. Oh, wow, listen to it. Uh, listen to yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah. look like a listen. dude out of a career oh, forever. Yeah. Whoa, Dane Cook. You look like a dude out of a career forever. Why? Cuz they insulted the powerful Tony and Dane? No, no, no. That's not how this comedy thing works. We're allowed to make fun of you, Tony and Dane. 
What are you going to do? You're going to blacklist him? Is that what Dane just said? Let's hear that again. Uh, we are. You look like Ben Stiller with his fur off. Oh, wow. That Listen is a bomb. Listen to it. Listen to yeah, it. You yeah. look like a Listen. dude out of a career forever. Oh, yeah. I've never seen Even the audience wasn't really on board with that. They're like, why? That's not how this works. You don't blacklist him from having a career because you were insulted. Come on. Hey. Somebody talk out of the side of their mouth and their ass at the same time. <laughs> It doesn't work. It's so funny. I've always, I've always wondered how long it would take to get like one of you delusional trolls to actually do the show. It's so funny. Oh. Wow, this is startling. And I want to remind everybody, this is all footage that was cut out of the final episode that is now up on YouTube. So whatever happens here in these next three minutes, well, it better be justified here to have this cut out. Otherwise, Tony talks all this talk in front of his live crowd, but at the end of the day, deletes this. Now, deleting this up until now is the biggest pussy move ever. It makes you look very insecure, okay? So maybe he says the N-word, maybe he throws a sponsor under the bus. That's the only thing I can think of that would allow this, well, at least make me understand why Tony would you delete this the part. Word also. Yeah, exactly. So, what could have happened that this needed to be taken out, other than Tony being embarrassed and pretending like he's so tough here? But you edited this out. It doesn't work. It's so funny. I've always, I've always wondered how long it would take to get like one of you delusional trolls to actually do the show. It's so funny. Oh. Why is he delusional? Yes. Took you a long time, bud. Yeah, very good, Jeremiah. He looks like James Franco's hemorrhoid. Bra bra. No, it's not gonna work. That's People a... actually want to hear what this guy's got to say. Your jokes back at him are falling flat. The defensiveness looks bad. Compliment. Hey, you know what? I have nothing mean to say to you, man. I love your sex. Wow. I, I cannot take that compliment right now. <laughs> oh my God. On top of everything, he's a pandering fuck. Yeah, exactly. Whoa, Dane, Dane. I remember your bit about... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So Dane is... And Dane is visibly mad. That was a brilliant move by the troll, uh, Neil Pop. He went to... Uh, to uh, what's his name? Uh, Jeremiah, Jer Jeremiah Wonders. <laughs> and he goes, hey, man, I got nothing against you. I like you. That's a smart move. I'm not saying this guy's the best, but that's a smart move. You don't want to attack everybody. That makes you crazy. You only attack some. Then it might seem justified. And maybe these other guys will lay off you and understand. Very smart. Endering fuck. Yeah, exactly. Dane, I remember your bit about... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go on. Yeah. Go I wish on. I could tell Neil, you Neil, let me remind you that we remember your bit with whatever that was you tried to close with. But Tony, let him speak, man. This is sick. You're white knighting for Dane? Let the guy talk. Go ahead. I remember Dane's bit, and it's actually a fairly decent one. It's about ha having, it's about wow. what Dane does all the time. He's having an erection by himself because his 20-year-old girlfriend's out with life, you know? And he, he puts Wordy. a cashew on the end of his penis. I love it. You're really roasting. Oh, You're really roasting uh -oh. him for having a young hot girlfriend, hey. Neil. Boy, oh boy! I wonder how he's going to survive the verbal Give me abuse. A break. He's a creep. Wow. <laughs> okay, Neil. Oh yeah. Hey, yeah. am I done? I feel like I'm in the principal's office with you, fags. Nothing's funny with you Whoa. guys. Come on, we, uh, Neil. Hey. Neil, that would hey. work. Neil, that would work if comedians and all of us weren't having a great episode until you got up here. <laughs> oh what? man. Wait, now the episode's not great. Why can't this be part of the experience? I still don't see why this needed to be removed. Now remember, Tony and company might have a point here if this was kept in the show. Okay. The, uh, you schooled them. Oh, you guys really? Dane Cook, Tony, Brian Redband, and a band are better than an open mic level guy off the street? Oh, how surprising. And also, he didn't even say anything that was that crazy. Why can't they just be like, you've got balls for coming up here and roasting us? Like making yeah. fun of Dane's girlfriend, which is 20 years younger than him, which is an obvious case yeah. to make fun of. He didn't even say anything that they can't take. I don't yeah. get it. So this is the disturbing part. I need to, to ha say it again. This was deleted. Let's hear some more. I can't wait. Like like your your master plan that you thought of in your toxic hey, negative hey, they're world they're way, is they're not way, working. They're way meaner to me. Because they think I'm funny. See these guys really laying into me? They're stabbing me with knives. 
You guys are fucked. So when wow. you <laughs> thought of this before you came here tonight, oh, you fuck. thought you were going to, like, break the show and fucking, like, really stand out and that this no, was going to work. No, I thought I was going to hear you tell a joke, bud, and I haven't so far. Wow. Well, then you haven't been paying attention to the show. We've been up oh, here for, uh... God. See the drummer standing up? He so badly wants to chime in with something. Every time he does, by the way, it falls completely flat. The guy's name is Joel or Mendez or something. Yeah. He's awful, and he's trying to get a, a word in now. If he does, I'm going to be sickened. I hate him. We've been up here for 45 autism, minutes. Autism, autism. Am I done? Am I done, boys? Wow. Oh, you're fucking done. Dude. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, dang. You, Neil, you, Neil, you never even got started. You dude. never got started. There he goes, Neil Pop, ladies and gentlemen. All right. There he goes. All right, I want to see what happens now. Why did that need to be edited out? Let's see what else happens. Tony is Frank, furious. Frank. Wow, what Frank, a loser. Take, take him all the way out. Show him what the sidewalk looks like. What the fuck? Why? Take him all the way out? So Tony is removing the guy from the building for this. That is a civil rights violation. Change my mind. Holy fuck, that's too far, right? He, what did he even do? What did he do that was so bad? He came up there and he tried to roast you. You're the roast master, right? That's. He thought you could take it. Uncalled for. Frank, Frank. Wow, what Frank, a loser. Take, take him all the way out. Show him what the sidewalk looks like. There he yeah. goes, Neil Pop, everybody. Thank you. Have fun at the Laugh Factory, buddy! Wow! <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> goodbye! I can't wait. <laughs> all right, all right. No, 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 no. Hey, goodbye. Yeah, that's what Tony sang while deleting this part of the podcast. Wow. Really, really shows some weakness here. That was dog shit. <laughs> yeah, it was. That's never happened before in the history of the show. That oh. guy thought he was really oh. going to make it here tonight. He's going to go back to the other, uh, to the other uh, internet. The internet trolls all just learned a fucking lesson here tonight, no, I do believe. No, we did not. It's that you suck no. and you're not funnier than anyone. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah, well, we suck and we're not funnier than anyone. Wow. The Delita speaks. You hear his words. Internet trolls all just learned a fucking lesson here tonight, I do believe. It's that you suck and you're not funnier than anyone. Yeah. Yeah. A, a well attempted, uh, a well attempted trolling. And, and by the way, we'll just cut him out of the uh, of the edited version of yeah. this show. So. Whoa! Why? You get nothing. You end up with nothing, oh, my friends. I see. But wait, he said he liked my saxophone. <laughs> Okay, that's the clip. How exciting! How revealing! I believe there are a few moments here. Let's see how they handle it. Let's go back to the podcast version. Tony claims he doesn't want to give the troll attention. He doesn't want to put out that idea. Hmm. Sort of understand that, but no, nope, no dice. You have to leave him in. You have to. It happened. It was real. I mean, the only reason to cut it out is that he actually won, and you don't want anyone to see that he's better. Because if Tony exactly. really believes that he schooled him, he would want everyone to yeah, see that. Yeah, why wouldn't you want everyone to see that as a warning as to what exactly. will happen to you if you dare try this? It's not like there's going to be that many attempts, and you guys are such pros, you should be able to shut that down immediately, and that would be great, even if it happened once per episode. What a great show. So what? You get made fun of. Who cares? So to sh try to shut down being made fun of entirely is whack in itself. It's still whack. All right, let's see. Uh, he's going to reference the cut at one hour in. Let's see what he says here. Let's go to one hour in, back to the uh, YouTube version of the show here. Let's see what he says in reference to the cut. To a more positive one. Oh, very yeah. cool. I believe that. Have yeah. you ever worked with a comedian that was on before you? <laughs> Oh, whoops. Here Did I call us. him a comedian? Oh. No, yeah. Uh, she says she was saying that she works in behavioral therapy. And then Dane goes, have you worked with the comedian who's here before you? So he's still thinking oh, about the Oh, yeah, because I remember when this happened, it didn't make any sense. Leave one. 
Oh, very yes. cool. I believe that. Have yeah. you ever worked with a comedian that was on before you? <laughs> <laughs> Did I call him a comedian? Oh. No, yeah, no. That's a... Uh, yeah, he's... Uh, uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't want... Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. The last comedian <laughs> that was on before him was, uh, was motherfucking uh, <laughs> Daniel Magnin, <laughs> the That's South Park kid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was just that one guy that came on, complimented Jeremiah's Saxon, and left. It was yeah. crazy. Wow, so they're really enjoying this. Um, let's see, is that it? Uh, one more moment here. Jeremiah does his spit take, and then ba- Dane, sorry, called him Bane. <laughs> Dane copies him. So this is pretty pathetic. Just some icing on the cake to show you how stupid Dane is. Let's watch. Very nice man. Uh, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't need his behavior shaped at all. He's okay. ever notice anything about white men that's a little bit different in Wait, did than, I s- uh, than a black man? Ah, yes, shit. Uh, well, uh, they're 10150. Yeah, here we it's go. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. So Vanessa, what do you do for like hobbies and stuff? Look what, at Dan's you know, loading up with some water. You do for fun, that's uh, that's super uh, African or French or whatever. Oh, I like having sex, like most people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's the bit. She says I like having sex. Jeremiah Wonders comes out and he does a spit take. Right? Okay. Keep watching. Dane decides I want to get in on this spit take thing. I want to copy. Jeremiah's bit. People liked that. Maybe if I do that, I'll end on a positive note. (laughs) Damn. God damn, god damn, god damn. Wow. All right. White guy's dream. White guy's dream. You are living in a white guy's dream. (laughs) God. All right. All right. Vanessa. Vanessa. Okay. (laughs) All right. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, Jeremiah. Jeremiah just keeps doing spit takes. Yeah, no, Jeremiah did another <laughs> spit take. He pre- prematurely ejaculates out of his mouth. Okay, so this is interesting. Jeremiah has done two spit takes. Both of them killed. The audience is dying. Dane's looking around like, what could I do to top this? <laughs> so let's see what Dane decides to do. Uh... <laughs> Wow, Vanessa, yeah. uh, you uh, you ever been with a white man before? Oh He's yes. He's thinking hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another spit take by Jeremiah Wonders. So Jeremiah Wonders is on his third spit take. Remember, the bit gets funnier the more you do it. <laughs> everyone's dying. <laughs> Dane look. Dane doesn't know why everyone's laughing. By the way, he's looking around confused, but he sees Tony is kneeled over laughing with a red face. Now remember. Dane thinks Tony is a beautiful, chic, cool, slick art woman from <laughs> 1998's New York art scene. Okay, <laughs> He wants to do anything to impress her. Okay, <laughs> So he sees Tony is having such a great time, so he decides he's going to get in on this bit. Let's see what he does. <laughs> <laughs> you ever notice anything about white men that's a little bit different? Different in bed than uh, than a black man? Yes, something. Uh, well, uh, they um. Oh, Dane's loading up with water. Like oh wait, dicks, that so looked like he swallowed. Nope. Look at Dane. <laughs> Dane does a spit take now, overshadowed by uh, Jeremiah Wonder's fourth spit take. So this is interesting. Dane got in his head. He goes, Jeremiah did three spit takes. How funny would it be if the next thing she says, I do a spit take? People would be like, ah. But Jeremiah, being so autistic, does a fourth spit take, walking right in front of Dane Cook, while Dane does the spit take that he thought would be the icing on the cake. Do you see this? (laughs) And look at how far in advance Dane loads up the water and saves it. Yes. So Dane thought, there's no way Jeremiah is going to do a fourth, because comedy comes in threes, right? And uh, I'll do the fourth. That will be really funny. People won't expect it. But no. Jeremiah does the fourth, and Dan looks like an idiot behind him doing the same thing. Something, uh, well, uh, they, um, look at him. He's loading I don't up. like big dicks, so it works He's like, me. this is going to kill. Look. Oh, but overshadowed by Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, of course, steals all the, the <laughs> applause and gobbles up the laughs. But he's actually good at it. 
And Dane has to give it up for him, otherwise he'll look completely butthurt and stupid. I like some people in the chat, they go, yikes, this is his train of thought. I mean, I don't know. I'm assuming based no, on micro expressions, but that's funny how people in the chat are like, I can't believe that's his train of thought. Despicable. It's like, <laughs> it very well might not be. I mean, I'm guessing, you know. All right. Oh my God. Oh, it's so perfect. God, she was perfect till she said that. All right, there it was. What a wonderful tape. Tony, you've got some explaining to do, brother. <laughs> Brother Tony, bye brother, bye bye brother. What do we say to brothers here? So long, loved you, we miss you. Uh, wow, very sick. That was awesome though, huh? What an exposed piece. People are saying we Make should get sure that up on YouTube. Make sure you let Dane and Tony know that we've yep, seen the edited clip. We've seen clip. the tape, you look extremely weak. Why would you cut that out? You, uh, there is no excuse at all, right? That's what you gotta say to them.